Hey everybody and welcome to another edition of Crosspoint Extra. We have some extra special guests in the house today and we can be really honest, they're a little nervous behind the microphone. You guys doing okay? I'm doing good. We're great. We're going to yeah. be good, good. We, we've talked about it a little bit. No one can hurt you at all in this. You're absolutely safe. One person audience is more intimidating than like a room full of people. Uh, there you go. There you go. Well, I promise I don't bite either, okay. so <laughs> we're going to be good. Uh, for those of you who may be hearing us for the first time, my name is Andy Addis. I have the privilege of being the pastor at Crosspoint Church. We're a multi-site church across the state of Kansas. And today we have uh, the Moffats with us who are a part of Anguished Hearts Ministries. And uh, I will tell you a little bit more. They're going to tell you a little bit more about them. I'll tell you a little bit more about them as well. But before we get into this, let me tell you uh, how you're fitting into the life of our church right now. We're in a series called Generation. And we're talking about the fact that while the world focuses on millennials and boomers and uh, Generation Xers and all that, that God always speaks of the generation. And how do we pull it all together? How do we be the generation that God wants us to be? And one of the things that we're focusing on is family, and that's why you're here, um, to talk about family, to talk about marriage. And uh, your ministry is absolutely amazing. So i got a couple of questions that will be so easy for you to answer. They're just going to roll right out of who you are. But uh, here, here's the first softball. What is Because you guys are coming to an event at Crosspoint Hutch this Wednesday, 7 p.m., just a couple of days. Everybody's invited, but you'll learn more about it right now. What is Anguished Hearts, and, uh, and what is that ministry all about? You want me to go? Yeah, go for it. Anguished Hearts. Well... Oh, wow. We, we've had an incredible journey. We've been married 17 years, and uh, seven of those were pretty difficult. Hmm. And the last 10 have been remarkable. And there was a, a couple key things that happened in that time period that we'll talk about a little more on Wednesday, obviously. But Anguish Hearts, there's so much that wraps into the, the name Anguish Hearts. Uh, you know, we exist to lead broken people into a powerful relationship with Jesus. Hmm. That's our mission statement. And so from a, from a very surface level or from a high level, it looks like a marriage ministry. But there's so much more than what we're about. So it is it is a marriage ministry, but it's about discipling in Christ. It's about growing in your faith. But one of the avenues, well, the most important avenues is how that happens in marriage then. Yes. Yeah. And I take it by the uh, first word in the title that anguished, you're going to tell us a little bit about what it's like to walk through some of the more difficult spots. It's not going to be a Leave it to Beaver episode with behind a white picket fence and everything's always been good. No. 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 Because it's 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 not good. You know, everybody goes through hard times. Every, everybody goes through valleys. Um, but we experienced deep sorrow, pain. Mm. Um, anguish. Anguish. But we found the solution <laughs> to the problem. And um, that's our heartbeat. That's what we want to share with others. And maybe you're not struggling in your marriage. Maybe you're struggling with other things. But what we have found works for all problems in life, mm. not just for your marriage or for your relationships. So. Now, I know you individually, and, uh, and I've heard a little bit of your story, and I'm looking forward to hearing the, the full, uh, full disclosure <laughs> and be a part of what's going to happen here. But I'm just going to take a guess because I know your hearts. This isn't like a five-step process to a better marriage. It's not a 10 easy things to do. Uh, so w when you say you found something, what is this something that uh, that put the pieces back together for you guys? Oh, hope. Hope mm. is what we found. Um, Grace. We, yeah, forgiveness. Forgiveness. Mm. I mean, words that we, as a body of Christ, we read about a lot and we listen to a lot, but we don't, I don't think, fully experience them. I mm. think they're just these words that we learn about, especially from a young age, if you've grown up in the church. But we experienced what it means to have forgiveness and grace in a relationship. And really, that's when we became who we are today, mm. is from that. Now, in that, I love what you're saying, because we often treat the church and doctrine and read your Bible as kind of a high school lab, yeah. where you put it on the table, you dissect it, you know it absolutely. But you're saying that you took those things, grace, mercy, forgiveness, love, uh, and, uh, and you applied them to real life. Yeah. Yeah. And so I'm going to go out on a limb here and say, if there's a marriage out there, maybe things are going well, but... Uh, a good dose of the reality of the gospel would take it to another place. Mm. Absolutely. Or maybe a marriage out there that has some tweaking issues mm -hmm. uh, that they could find some solace and some progress yeah. in what you're talking about. Or maybe let's go all the way to the other end of the continuum, a marriage that they looked at each other and said, we're going to give one thing one more shot. Yeah. You no, know, you both simultaneous. Yeah. Yep. There. Well, we talk about that and we talk about maybe tonight's the, the, the final straw. 
Mm. Maybe tonight you both made the agreement that let's try one more thing. Mm. And so we actually will probably say that on Wednesday night from stage. But we do not want people to not come because they feel like they're in a good place. Uh, There's we, always room for improvement, right? Even in our marriage. I mean, yeah. gosh, mm-hmm. we, we could share story after story of things that happened in the last week that that we have to apply what we're going to teach on Wednesday to our own marriage. And so if you've been married for a long time and you're happy, come. I mean, you will be encouraged and challenged. We promise you that. That is awesome. Now, because this is a series we're calling Generation, and I'm firmly, as a pastor, firmly a believer that one of the things culture has done is it's robbed us of the ability for olders to lead youngers. And you have just self-identified, Brian, as an older. You've done <laughs> I that. Hit the 40 mark yeah, last month. <laughs> that's it. So we're, we're an older. Yes. Um, but in that, um, in the room with us, our student ministry will continue to meet, but the 11th and 12th graders are going to be meeting with us. Great. Because one of the big next steps for them, most of them will be moving into that kind of relationship, a marriage relationship. So we want them to come along. Is that a good idea? I mean, we didn't ask you about it. We just kind of said that's what we're going to do. But do you feel that's a decent idea? Yeah, I, I, I think so. Shay, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, I definitely think if we can pour into that younger generation right now and model what it looks like to have a marriage centered with Christ, if we can, if we can just start with one family at a time, generations can be changed Mm. down the road and that's our passion that's our heartbeat is just to change maybe change the way you grew up um or you know there may be younger generation that they see that their mom and dad are not in a healthy marriage Mm. and if we can plant seeds and pour into that younger generation hope can happen for that generation that's awesome. There's also there's some some topics or some things that have happened in our relationship and our story that people can relate to not being married. I mean, there's <laughs> some really dark things that we're going to talk about. Um, we don't want to do too much of a spoiler, right? Alert, but right, there, right. you know, there's some there were addictions in our relationship that had to be overcome for us to heal, and and so we're going to talk about some things that whether you're married or not, I think can hit home. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I've seen, uh, I've known you guys for a while because we had a mutual friend. That's how, that's how we met. And uh, you guys met on a cruise, if I remember right. Yeah. A little bit of our, little of our thunder. Oh yeah, man. I, I won't thunder. say any yeah, more than that. But more. what I'm saying is there were some unique connections <laughs> that, that brought this through for, for you to be a part of, uh, of, of our faith community, yeah. but not also just to do what you do and please take this in, in the right way. But I don't get the impression that, you know, you're a studied, polished set of preachers, teachers. <laughs> no, not at all. No, And I hope that's not who we want to be. Well, and there's an effectiveness in what you're doing. So if it's not that you have this polished product, what is it that you think that is, is causing anguished hearts to be as effective as it is? I think we're relatable. Mm. We hear that all the time. Every, well, Every time we speak, whether it's a, a small group of 10 or 12 or a group of 500, people tell us, you guys are so relatable. Um, we're vulnerable. Vulnerable, mm. transparent. And these are words mm. we hear over and over again. And that's we're not saying that from a prideful standpoint. We're saying that because this is the feedback we're receiving. And, and we learned in our journey that you have to be transparent mm-hmm. to be able to get help and to grow. And so for us, if we can encourage someone to go, hey, if, if they went through that and we're going through that, maybe there's hope for us too. And, and we always say this all the time, people cannot always relate to the Bible or to who Jesus is because they don't know him. They don't understand who he is, but they can relate to stories mm-hmm. and they might be able to relate to our story. And if we can encourage them down the path of crossing the line of faith, mm-hmm. that's what it's all about. I mean, we love to speak to people who believe, but we really love to speak to people who have questions about who Jesus is, because if we can encourage them, then all hope can be found. So. Man, that's awesome. Yeah. Awesome, awesome. Did, did you want to add to that? I saw you kind of out on the edge there. Didn't know if you had something else no, to add. Nope, I'm good. And so he covered it then. He covered good. it, yeah. Okay, speaking of relatable, let's uh, yeah. kind of turn the turn the boat uh, in a little bit of a different direction so that maybe those who are going, you know, I might want to do this, but just how relatable are they? I want to talk less about Anguish Tarts and more just yeah. about you guys for just a second. Um, uh, you, uh, Brian, were just uh, bragging on your wife just a second ago oh, about yeah. the fact that <laughs> you got to see her in her element and how much joy that gave you. So... Uh, tell us uh, a little bit about what you saw this last week and see if some of these folks around here might be able to identify with yeah, that. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we're Kansas kids. We've lived in Missouri now for 16, 16 years, years, but we still say we're from Kansas. <laughs> so this is home for us. Um, there is so much for us that we love being back with the Cross Point family. We'll talk about that on Wednesday. But I grew up 30 miles from here, and Shayla grew up in western Kansas. And so um, this past weekend, we spent some time with her family working cattle. Mm. 
So you can explain what we were doing working cattle. How much detail you want to go into? <laughs> um, working cattle. It's springtime, so we are working the cows. We are working the calves. We are vaccinating, pouring, deworming, um, castrating. Man. Um, <laughs> Ear tagging. Good Kansas um, stuff, you know? Yeah, trimming tails. I grew up in Kansas. I never even come close to that. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> so, Andy, what, what we were talking about when we stepped in here earlier, uh, I love watching Shayla with pure joy. I just, there's something about it just fills me up. And, and to watch her interact with her dad this weekend, oh man, it doesn't get any better than that. Mm. I mean, some people want to go spring break, go to the mountains and go skiing or go to the ocean. I just want to see my wife love what she loves to do. And I want to be on the farm. Yeah. That's awesome. So see, if there's anybody listening that has farmland, we, you know, maybe yeah. we should talk after. <laughs> oh, well, there you go. Free ad. Very good. Very good. Uh, I, I married an Oklahoma farm girl, and uh, I've seen her uh, in action a couple of times. And uh, whereas you you see, you know, this incredible love, how proud you are, I, I get a little worried that if I ever cross her, she'll know where to bury the body that nobody can find it. Uh, oh, well, we'll tell one quick story. We, we know your, your audience loves stories. So we were heading to a American retreat that we led about a month ago and uh, we're driving through the Ozarks heading toward uh, the lake of the Ozarks near Camdenton Missouri and Shayla sees a farmer out feeding cattle and she simply states to me well Bri it just hit me I'll never have a husband that feeds cattle on a tractor <laughs> I thought wow talk about expectations not being met after 17 years of marriage it finally it finally clicked I was like wow my I will never see Brian out on a John Deere with a hay bale on the back are you, are you okay with that? Oh, I have to be. Yeah, no. <laughs> yes, I am okay with that. <laughs> I said I have a lawnmower that's a tractor. Does that count? Well, yeah, that's between you and her. I, I have no idea. Okay, now let's turn the tables just a little bit because okay. uh, you got to talk about her. But there's one thing that we're all impressed with about him. I want to see how impressed you are. This dude can run. Oh, yeah. Tell us about that. Um, well, I married um, a very crazy uh, man <laughs> that I love dearly. Um, he... Again, it's, it's part of our st story, and it's part of our journey. Um, Brian has um, faced some things in his past. Again, I don't want to give it all away. Sure. Um, that was leading him to a path of destruction. Mm. And, um, you know, we always say an encounter with Jesus changes everything. And it did, and, and his addiction switched to running. And um, mm. we have to be careful when we talk about that because... Brian will even say sometimes running can become an addiction. Mm -hmm. um, but yes, he is a crazy runner, and uh, he loves marathon running. And just recently, a couple of weeks ago, he turned 40. Mm -hmm. And uh, he ran 40 miles on his 40th birthday. Like on the day. On the same day. Like he ran 40 <laughs> the miles same run. <laughs> on the same day. Yeah. So... Uh, Y oh, you just got to love him how he is wired, and uh, <laughs> I, I do, and I support him because I know that that he always, I'm always scared when he comes back from a run because that's his Jesus time. Mm. And Oh, what did he hear? Uh-huh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, he'll come back, and sometimes his wild ideas, I'm just like... Yeah, I don't know yeah. if you should run. Again. Yeah, <laughs> you, you need to sit on the couch for a little bit. Yeah. Hey, I just wanted to say this. I've been wanting to say this to you. It, I, I really, I mean, I spent a lot of time in the gym. I'm not a runner, but when I was younger, I used to lift a lot. We did powerlifting stuff, and so I know what it is to spot. So if you ever need a spotter, I'll be glad to drive right behind you. <laughs> <laughs> I will get in the car. I'll honk the horn. You'll I'll bring. It. Yeah, I'm, I'm with team. you. That's it. I did. Yeah. I did on that 40 mile run. Yeah. Did you run. really? I jumped yeah. in the van and I went and found him, and I found him at mile 37. Yeah, and um, nineteen, nineteen, and yeah. I and said, "Are you are you doing doing okay?" And he said, "I'm I'm starting to feel a little tired." Really. Oh, at thirty seven, yeah, thirty seven miles. Okay, well you're all, you're almost there, honey. <laughs> Keep going. If it makes you feel any better, my entire thirty seventh year, I felt that way. Yeah, okay, so. <laughs> okay. Well, I, I do I do like to run, and and we're gonna talk about you know in a marriage, what does it what does it look like to be on the same team? Mm -hmm. And uh, yes, we're gonna share some of our story but we also want to be a time of teaching. And yeah. So we're going to share some things on what we do in our marriage to make sure we're on the same team. And, and that's just one example. I mean, there was nothing more beautiful than watching my wife drive in our minivan down the road. I knew it was her coming because that's, that was my sidekick. That's my teammate. Mm. And uh, she was going to check on me. 
Man, I've uh, in every interaction, I've always walked away with this, knowing that uh, there's a special kind of love that you two are sharing because it was a love that was broken that was put back together again. And you can all, you can always tell as a pastor who's done a lot of counseling, you can always tell when when somebody is in love is re in love again. And there's something strong about that. So I cannot wait for Crosspoint to meet you more firmly. Shayla, you were with us uh, with our women's ministry a while yeah. back. We got like. Uh, the better half of the story, but yeah. uh, but we'll get the full part now. And um, I'm worried that the women might throw tomatoes at me. Uh, that, that, they're they're figuring. Speaking <laughs> of, let's let's yeah. just wrap up on this. Um, uh, you've told me some things in the past. You've been very complimentary of Crosspoint, and since the majority of those who are listening, uh, I mean, you go to a great church out in, in Missouri, um, and I, I love your pastor, know him, Merle, and yeah. uh, and it's fantastic. But we always love to see you when you're in the house. What is it about uh, uh, Crosspoint that uh, that you would say is uh, is positive oh gosh there's so many um it starts and we know this church isn't about you Andy, mm-hmm. and and that's that's probably Please. the beauty yeah. of it i mean honestly that that is and we see a lot of churches whether we're speaking or travel i love to visit churches when i travel you guys are just authentic mm-hmm. from the top and you love jesus more than you love your wife mm-hmm. you love jesus more than you love your boys you love jesus more than you love your congregation and that's what's special about cross point i mean it really is and when you walk into the building, you just feel welcomed. Good. Um, you feel at home. And even as a visitor, you know, I don't, uh, we're not really visitors anymore. <laughs> but people try to figure out who we are, yeah. why we're walking in places and we shouldn't be walking. There's just, there's just a presence about that building, and it's not the building, it's the people in the building that make you feel welcomed. Yeah. Amen, amen. And I've probably told you this, Andy, we both have told you, um, you know, it's in Hutchinson, Kansas, so the people live here probably take it for granted. And so mm-hmm. I, I just want to share that, that people are really fortunate to have you guys here and that hopefully they're not taking it for granted, and, and hopefully we can share some of that on Wednesday to encourage people to, to jump in and be all in. Amen, amen. I don't know about that first stuff about me, but I know that what you're sensing at the church and uh, in, in the people, I hope, is a, a reality. And so we want to invite all of those to come and be a part of this incredible opportunity this Wednesday, March 22nd, 7 p.m. at Cross Point Hutch to be with Anguished Hearts. We can't wait to see you there, and thank you guys so much for being a part of all this. You're welcome. We look forward to it. Yeah. All right. God bless you guys, and thank you for being a part of Cross Point Extra. Uh, we try and give you what's coming up and what's next here at Cross Point, and uh, we want to bless you because God's blessed us so much. So let us know if there's something that we can do to make your walk easier or better, but uh, for now, we'll let us sign off, and we'll look forward to seeing you this Wednesday, this weekend, or anytime the future here there or in the air they always hate it when i say that here there or in the air the old dj coming out of that's it that's it god bless you guys and we'll talk to you later bye-bye